So if you've been considering moving to Indian River County, but just trying to figure out what area and what part of Indian River County would suit your needs best, well stay tuned because in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna do that right after this. So what is going on guys? My name is Andrew Pench. I'm a local realtor in the Vero Beach and Sebastian area. If you're looking for a channel that goes over everything about what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep, and buy real estate anywhere in the Florida East Coast, then please like this video, tap that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell because I'll be uploading a video every single week on Friday about what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep here on the Florida East Coast. I'm getting calls from people every single day and I absolutely love it. So if you have any questions or concerns or if you wanna to talk directly to me about buying a house here in any River County or anywhere on the Florida East Coast, then please give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email because I promise I'll have your back when making that move to the Florida East Coast. All right guys, so now it's time to jump into the video and I'm, we're gonna kinda of go over different types of people you know, different stages of life, different types of people, and exactly what part of any River County would work best for that type of person. So first of all, I wanted to start east and work our way west. And the first person I'm gonna be talking to, you guys, big pockets, you wanna live over on the island, live that exclusive lifestyle. Well, I'm gonna say that Vero Beach on the east side on the island is gonna be the first choice for you. So you beachgoers with multi-million dollars and you want to live the exclusive proper lifestyle, then Vero Beach on the Island is my first choice because you really have an exclusivity that no one else really has in that 32963 zip code. It is iconic. They call it the million dollar island for a reason and it is a very, very upscale place to live and, and call home and or even just for a second home if you're just looking for a property to spend the best times because i don't know if you could tell it's a little hot out here right now but if you want to spend the best times of the year in vero beach on the beach itself then this is really the place to do it if you have the means to do so so there are several multi-million dollar uh, properties here that back up to the beach you can get yourself plenty of land plenty of acreage as well so you have several high rises multi-bedrooms multi-bathrooms places here on the water in Vero Beach, there are multiple HOA gated neighborhoods for your peace of mind if you do plan on being a snowbird and having that place on the island for you as well. Uh, you'll have the peace of mind also of knowing that the community is gonna be taken care of with its own staff, its own guards, its own gates, and, uh, and just things like that. When you're gone, out of state, and don't have to think about that type of thing whenever you're uh, out of the area. And the reason why I chose Vero Beach for that group more specifically is that there's a lot more activities, a lot more higher end upscale bars and restaurants. So a lot more five star resort uh, style restaurants and bars and also hotels are there. So whenever you have your friends over, if they are not gonna be staying at the house with you, they can rest assured that they have a beautiful, beautiful hotel such as the Vero Beach Kempton Hotel, uh, the Costa de Esa, which is owned by Gloria Estefan is there, just within walking distance or golf carting distance because that's a very popular thing to do in the 32963 area as well. There's also very close access uh, on the island. You get access to the Quail Valley Country Club, so that's gonna be within driving distance or golf cart distance as well. Um, but most likely you're gonna be taking your Lamborghini or Porsche there because that's what the because <laughs> that's what the parking lot's mostly full of is McLarens, Lamborghinis, Porsches. That's the type of clientele that can afford to go to these uh, country clubs that we're seeing as well. So it's a beautiful, beautiful area with tons of amenities, plenty to do. And if you are more looking for that upscale lifestyle, then that is the first place that I'd put you. Secondly, I wanted to talk to you more relaxed beachgoers. I want to talk to you people who, who uh, want to be on the beach within walking distance to the beach, but don't want to be around where everything is constantly going on 24 seven and there's always something to do. If you're looking for more of a relaxed style of living, but still being on the beach, uh, just within walking distance, then I recommend going a little bit further north up into Wabasso area. So Wabasso, we still have houses in the sevens and eights, uh, seven to 800,000. There's not an ocean drive like there is in Vero Beach where shops, bars, and restaurants are all up and down. You're still within 15 minutes of that area though. If you did want to cruise down A1A, it's a beautiful drive, very low traffic drive, and it's a great place to have your home base, but still being driving distance to what is all happening in Vero Beach if you wanted to take advantage of that, but not necessarily live in the middle of it. So Wabasso area for that would be 
my number one choice for beachgoers and you know if you want to live on the island would be on the Wabasso side or north of Vero but still within driving distance of everything going on in Vero Beach. The lifestyle in Sebastian is definitely a little bit more Margaritaville, more kickback. Uh, one of the more popular bars there is actually a biker bar called Earl's Hideaway. So if you're a Harley driver, but you still wanna have that, that place on the beach, feel free to go there. There's a lot more dive bars and more uh, mulligan style restaurants in that part of Florida or in that part of Indian River County. So that's really where you wanna go if you just wanna have flip flops, shorts, uh, maybe a polo shirt if you want and just go in there and call it a call it a day while Vero Beach is definitely more dressed up and five-star resort style living Okay, now time to dial it down. I'm gonna be talking to the younger families now So first of all first thing I wanted to cover is younger families looking for that non HOA lifestyle So you don't care about the gated neighborhood you want to be able to have some toys out including maybe some basketball hoops uh, and then just have them, I don't know, have a four-wheeler, dirt bike, a couple of things to ride around the area and still have a good time uh, without being bothered and told by the HOA that they can't do that. So really where I recommend for younger families is for non-HOA younger families is gonna be Central Vero Beach because the school zones are really good here uh, in Central Vero Beach, or it's gonna be the Sebastian Highlands. So the Sebastian Highlands is a little bit more spread out, but it's a giant area with a lot, a lot of options to choose from with a relatively lower price point, no HOA, no monthly dues, and no one there telling you what you can and can't have in front of the yard. So like a basketball hoop, which there are county regulations, but there's not gonna be that additional body uh, form of body telling you what you can and can't do as far as an HOA association goes. So Vero Beach Central going back there, it's got a lot of nice safe neighborhoods, a lot of three bedroom, two baths, uh, but there are smaller homes mixed up in there as well, which I will get to in just a minute. So you have to be careful, you have to choose probably a bigger home if you're gonna be a younger family. But just north and just south of Central Vero as well, they're gonna have a lot of mixture of neighborhoods that have the two story options uh, in there as well. You're not gonna find that quite as bit, uh, quite a bit in Central Vero, but there's still a, a sprinkle of neighborhoods that you can find with the bigger homes. Uh, but if you just have one, two kids and a three bedroom, two bath is okay for you. Central Vero Beach is my number one choice. My number two choice is gonna be the Sebastian Highlands. And really what you get with the Sebastian Highlands is a lot of walking trails, a lot of parks, for you skaters out there, I don't know if skating is a big thing, but when I was in school, riding a skateboard was about one of the coolest things that you could do in high school, uh, middle school, well, more so middle school, I would say. Um, but we have a skate park in Sebastian, which is pretty cool too, because you're just within five, 10 minutes of there, depending on where in the Highlands you choose to live, when you're living in the Sebastian Highlands. So, perks of Sebastian, lots of parks. Uh, you get the skate park in there as well. You still get close uh, distance to the beach and to the rivers. You're near an inlet, so if you like to take the kids fishing, you can't get much better than Sebastian Inlet or Fort Pierce Inlet, but right now we're, we're zoning in on the inlet north in Sebastian. So fishermen, you wanna have a boat on the side of the road. You can do that, or on the side of your house, I'm sorry, not on the side of the road. You could do that as well by having it parked on the side of the house. There has to be a little bit of an offset there, but look up your county regulations or whenever we go to purchase, we can talk about that as well. Another great thing about Sebastian and Vero is the crime statistics. So Vero Beach, last time that I looked it up, was about 40% below the national average of crime. So we had an A minus crime rating, which is insane. Very, very good for Florida. And just being below that national average by as much as 40% is absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna pull up the crime statistics here. I wanna put it up on the screen because I don't remember off the top of my head what Sebastian crime stats were, but they're not far off from Vero. In fact, they may even be a little bit better. Now I'm talking to you young families that do wanna be in an HOA, and I can't tell you a specific area because HOAs are spread out all over the place. The majority of them are in the Vero Beach area, especially the northern Vero Beach area. So there's a new neighborhood called Lost Tree, uh, Lost Tree Village. That is a big, big neighborhood that will have a lot of options from DR Horton and Ryan Homes, where they're starting their phase two of that. Uh, there's also Falcon Trace down in the southern part of Vero where they're releasing a lot of homes there as well for right around the 400s. And then also north of Sebastian, there is Crystal Bay. Crystal Bay is another one where they're offering between the 350s and 380s for those four bedroom, two bath houses. These are very friendly, uh, family friendly neighborhoods and will have a lot to offer for you and your kids to have fun in as well. But there's no real area that I can dial in on 
that will be great for someone looking for an HOA neighborhood, a young family looking for an HOA neighborhood, because they are so scattered. But just remember, the majority of them are gonna be in the Vero Beach area. All right, and now for you country folks, we're looking out there for more than an acre, you know, one acre to five acres, maybe even 10, 20, 30 plus, if you're looking to open up maybe farmland or have a uh, boarding for horses. So this is gonna be in a, a specific area, and there's two that I can think of right off the top of my head. And one of them is gonna be just west of 58th Avenue, more in Central Vero, but west of 58th Avenue is where you're gonna find the majority of the homes that are gonna be on acreage. So 66th Avenue is another one where it really, really starts getting country when you go west of 66, but 58th is where it starts. And another place is gonna be Felsmere. Felsmere is just absolutely scattered with homes sitting on one, two, three, four, and five acres uh, all throughout the entire town. Now you're a little bit further away from the beach when you're in Felsmere, but if having many acres is important to you and you want to do it at the best deal, Felsmere is going to be where you want to look. All right, now it's time to talk to you boaters out there. You boaters, you fishermen, uh, that is really going to be pretty self-explanatory all up and down the river if you want to have a place with a actual boat ramp or, uh, or a boat lift. So there's two things you can have. I've seen neighborhoods where there is a private boat ramp. There's also neighborhoods that are close to the public boat ramps as well, but that's really all throughout Vero Beach and Sebastian because there's so many to choose from and you're never you know, more than 15, 20 minutes away from those boat ramps with any address with a Vero Beach or Sebastian town listed in that address. So you can really choose between any of those, but if you want the convenience of having your own ramp or having your own lift behind your house, then you're just gonna have to look all up and down the lagoon. But just keep in mind that a lot of these neighborhoods are gonna be scattered non-HOA and sometimes scattered HOA. Typically the non-HOA are gonna be where you're gonna find the best deal. So anywhere River Shores, Vero Shores are two really, really great areas just in the south part, just south of Oslo Road. Uh, where you're gonna find the best deal. I know that they're selling between the seven and 800,000 if you wanna have a Vero Beach address. And anywhere east of US-1 in Sebastian is where you're gonna find the best deal on the canal, uh, where you can still find it probably in the 750s, 800s as well, but for a much bigger home. So if uh, River Boat Club, that's one that, um, that I know is a really popular neighborhood, it's just not too big, so there's never a lot of inventory in there but River Boat Club has a lot of two-story homes with access to a canal, and I could show you a couple of listings that I've sold there recently for under a million dollars, which is perfect for someone, especially a big family that wants to have that boating lifestyle as well with the appropriate budget. But just remember, any non-HOA neighborhood or HOA neighborhood if you wanna keep your boat within a parking storage place, so right now about $70 which or $3 a linear foot of what you wanna store, is I'm paying 70 because I have a 22 foot boat, but the trailer's a little bit longer, so they took that into account. Uh, but you can have the boat stored somewhere if you wanna live in an HOA neighborhood like where I am, or you could, uh, you could just buy a house without an HOA, park the boat on the side, and not have to pay anything extra for that, um, just as long as you're following the county code uh, of where the boat should be relative to the house and the lot. All right, so now it's time to talk to you folks who wanna live in a 55 and older community. So 55 and older is gonna be mostly found, the communities are gonna be mostly found ar around the river. Um, they're gonna have an HOA starting at around, from what I've seen, about 400 to $550 a month. There is some mix of single family homes, but I would say the majority of 55 and older communities are gonna be mostly condos, so condo living. But just so you know, any River County does not allow anything over three stories high. And for 55 and older communities, you know, if you're still a young active, maybe you can handle the stairs, but the majority of them are not going to have that elevator for you to get up to that second floor. So something to consider. We do have some new communities that are gonna be 55 and older. I know one of them just off the top of my head is gonna be Harmony Reserve. This is a holiday builders area, and those prices are going anywhere between 460,000 to 600,000 with a 269 HOA fee at the moment. All right, and then my last category of people that I'm going to help direct you in any River County where it's a move is you people who are single as a Pringle. 
So you don't have one of these on your hand or uh, you know, you're not moving down with anyone. So if you are planning to make a move over here single, I don't know if you're just gonna be, you know, we have a lot of nurses that move here because of the Cleveland Clinic. And we have a lot of other scenarios that can factor into that as well. But if you're moving here single as a Pringle, I would say the first thing that I would look into would be Central Vero Beach because Central Vero Beach is gonna have you real close to downtown Vero, also very close to Ocean Drive as well. So there's always constant activity within a short, short driving distance from there. Even you could look around the downtown area and the historical homes. And the reason I say that is because a lot of these historical homes built in the 40s through the 60s or 70s are going to be smaller two bedroom, one bath or two bedroom, two bath homes that would fit your needs perfectly if that's all you're looking to move into when you move down. You also have a mixture of condos that are not 55 and older that could work out. So if you're moving here with a limited budget, I know I just put one on the market for 199 and uh, so $199,000 can get you a two bedroom, two bath, beautiful house right on Indian River Boulevard or beautiful condo I should say, right on Indian River Boulevard, perfect place for someone who just, and that's a scenario for my previous clients. So I had to stop filming because there's a garbage truck that came by. Um, but all I was really gonna say is that the client that's moving out of the condo that I'm referring to is in a similar situation. Um, but that really wraps up everything that I was trying to get at. So thank you again guys though for tuning into another video. If you have any questions or concerns before making your move down here to Vero Beach or Sebastian, then please give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. And I'll see you guys again next week. Thank you so much and have a good weekend. Bye.